Hey, with Signals and the Resource API, do we still need RxJS? The answer to that, like so many other technical questions, is it depends. Do you have data that is difficult to retrieve as you wish because of its structure? Do you require multiple data sets to get the information you need? Does the data come back in a challenging format? Do you need to post-process that data before assigning it to a signal? If so, you may benefit from RxJS. One note here, if you are a full-stack developer, often the best course of action is to manipulate the data on the back end. Design your API to simplify the data retrieval requirements for the app on the front end. Then you may not need RxJS for data manipulation. But for many of us, this isn't possible. We have to work with the data as it is given to us. Let's jump into some code and look at an example. In this sample application, we select a Star Wars vehicle, and it displays the vehicle details. We'd also like to display which films depict the selected vehicle. This application uses the Swapy public API, so we can't change the backend to make our life easier. Let's look at the data we're given. Here is the vehicle interface. It includes a films property that is an array of strings. That has to be the names of the films, right? Right? Nope. Here's some sample vehicle data. The films property is an array of URLs. To get the array of film names as we want for the UI, we need to issue an HTTP request to each of these URLs, read the film data, and add each film to an array for display. One way to do that is with RxJS. Let's add the code to the film service. First, we inject the vehicle service. We'll need that to access the selected vehicle so we know which vehicle's films to retrieve. And we're going to use HTTP to retrieve each film, so we also inject HTTP client. Next, let's create the resource, Vehicle Films Resource. Since we're working with RxJS, we'll use Rx resource. We pass in an object. The first property of that object is optional and defines any parameters. In our case, we want to get the related films anytime the selected vehicle changes. So we specify this dot vehicle service dot selected vehicle. Then we specify the stream. The stream expects a function that returns an observable. If we specified any params, we get a params object. I'll represent that with P. Since we want to issue a set of HTTP requests and combine the results into a single array, we'll use the fork join RxJS creation function. In the function, we access the params object P, reference the params, which is our selected vehicle, then dot down to the films property. Next, we use the array map method to process each URL link in the film's array. For each film, we call HTTP get to retrieve the film at that URL. Let's also specify a default value of an empty array. That way, the UI won't have to deal with undefined while the data is not yet retrieved. OK, so what did we just do? We created a resource. Every time the user selects a different vehicle, the stream function re-executes, retrieving each film in the array of films for the selected vehicle. We don't have to subscribe or unsubscribe. We just define our RxJS and let the resource API do its thing. And because it's an observable, we can add a pipeline as needed. Cool! We want to display the films in the vehicle detail component. So in that component, we inject the film service. Now we can reference the resource properties. The HTTP response is provided in the value property of the resource. This dot film service dot vehicle films resource dot value. And any error information is in the error property. This dot film service dot 
vehiclefilmsresource.error. Here I use a computed property to format an error message from the error property. In the vehicle detail template, we read the value of the error message signal and vehicle films signal. Will that work? Bring up the browser, select a vehicle, and there is our list of films. Select another vehicle, and its list of films are retrieved. Yay! Bottom line, use RxJS when you have complex data access requirements. You want to operate on emitted data using the pipeline. You are working with event streams, such as keyboard or mouse events, or you already have RxJS throughout your application. Thanks for watching. If this video was useful, please like and subscribe. Thank <laughs> you.